Hello. This is another in our series at Hubbop talking about partial budgeting and as a decision-making tool for machine learning investments. In the first presentation of the series, I gave a general overview of how to use partial budgeting as a decision-making tool. In this presentation, I'll provide an example of the process of working through a partial budget. So let's quickly review the process. You start with what is the proposed change that you would like to evaluate. This is where research into the pluses and minuses the proposed change might have on the net income of the business. Also, some assumptions will be formulated. If the change is to be made, we want to identify and write down what are going to be some potential net increases in net income, what are decreases in costs, what are decreases in income, and what increases in costs there might be if we make this change. Then we're going to summarize the, the change and look at what the net effect on the income, net income is going to be with this proposed change. Then there, we want to also consider also some non-economic and other factors that might be impact our decision on making this change or not. These are not necessarily easier to do, but are still something that need to be considered. So here's our example. If this is a vegetable farm that has a 40 horsepower gas tractor, relatively old, that is starting to get costlier and costlier each year to, to use because it's breaking down more and more than in the past couple of years. It's used on the farm to, for tillage, bed preparation, planting, and harvesting crops on the farm. So we're considering replacing that with a 60 horsepower four-wheel drive tractor um, that we would want to use instead. So here are our assumptions that we were, we're going to evaluate. We're going to say that the current tractor is used for roughly 400 hours to complete the, the certain field tasks that we have for planting, harvesting, maintaining, so on, of the, of the vegetable crops that we grow. Uh, the new tractor will only take two hours to do though. This is based on some of, of the work that we did to, to look to see um, at uh, online tools what would be the field capacity of the old tractor, what is the field capacity of the new tractor, and it routinely consistently came up that the new tractor would probably take half the time to do the same tasks as the old tractor. Now if you want to be conservative and say it's not going to quite take quite half as long that's fine, but this is an example, and, and so we're going to say in this example that it is half, and that's what we're going to base it on. So there's going to be a labor savings that we'll, we have, and there's going to be machinery expense savings as well. Now the old tractor will be traded in, and the net amount after that we owe after that will be financed. So let's talk a little bit more about the, how we to calculate the, or what about, thinking about calculating labor savings. Okay, as we said, we estimate that there'll be sa savings of 200 hours. Now we're just comparing um, the tractors being used for the same task, the old tractor, the new tractors being um, compared for doing identical tasks. The tractors may have been used for other things on the farm, but we're not uh, looking into that with this example or through this thought process for this uh, partial budget. So the hourly rate for, that we used to, for those 200 hours was $13 an hour. Why? Well, this is semi-skilled employee or yourself, so you should be paying yourself. Um, but somebody that's operating this tractor has to have some skills, especially when they're using some type of implement behind the tractor. And this also includes the employer costs, such as wages, workers' compensation insurance, Social Security, and Medicare. So let's actually get into looking at, at the four compartments or the four parts of the partial budget. If you recall from the, the first screencast, we start off here, we're starting off with what identifying any increases in net com income. Um, at this point, in this first go around, we're not really identifying any increases in net income, but we'll come back and revisit this as we talk about our second run through the, the partial budget. How about decreases in costs? Well, we've already said that we've identified two big 
factors that are going to decrease in cost. One is labor for similar field operations, and that is calculated out to be $2,600. And then we're also going to have savings in tractor operation costs as well, in fuel and lubrication and repair and maintenance. So our total decrease in cost is going to be $3,178. Now, can't really think of anything at this point that would decrease net income. Hopefully, this change would not change the quantity or quality of the vegetables that we're producing. But um, it's possible in your scenario and something that you may want to consider if there is any potential for decreases in net income. However, we are going to have an increase in cost. We're going to have uh, an interest, new interest, a new print. Uh, loan, so that means we're going to have interest payments. Um, why not the whole loan payment? Every loan payment has two parts, principal and interest. With each payment you make, the percentage of the tractor you own, or the equity, increases. The percentage of the tractor that the lender owns decreases. This change will be reflected at least once a year when we prepare balance sheets. Interest is an expense for the business. For the sake of this example, the total interest was divided by the total number of years the loan was for. The total term was for five years. So the average interest payment per year is listed here. So in summary, we look at to see what increases net income, and we see that we have uh, $3,178 of, of items that increase our in net income, and $474 which decrease our net income. So the net change is a positive $2,704. Is that good enough? Is that some, uh, enough of a, a, a work to decide that this is indeed a change we would like to make? Maybe, maybe not. Let's kind of go back and revisit some of the other considerations and, and maybe refine this, or at least share ways to refine this. So other considerations. Basically, in this example, we talked about things that hopefully were fairly quantifiable quantifiable. We can, through online resources and otherwise, look at field capacity of the tractors and the implements that are being used and be able to, to tell um, what those potential labor and machinery equipment savings were going to be. Something that's less quantifiable and something that, that you yourself have to be thinking about, well, could there be changes in crop yield? Could there be changes in crop quality as well? Hopefully there would be, with being more timely um, with, with planting, harvesting, um, caring for the crops, this will lead for increased yields and hopefully and or quality. Where we need to go and is try to start to figure that out is to look at your financial records and production records to see if we can tease out or glean any from information to be able to make those assumptions on any increases in net income. So other non-economic factors that you might want to consider would be less hours work in a day or the tasks are getting done. Uh, over the growing season, you're using less time to do those particular tasks. Uh, if you have labor that are doing the task, maybe that's not impo as important. But if you are, are the owner and operator of this farm, um, having to take less time to do the same amount of work has some value. How do you put a value on the, a dollar value on it? It's very difficult, but that's something else to factor in to the decision-making process when you're looking at this. Also, you know, ease of, of doing these tasks. You know, newer tractor may have features that make it easier for you to do these tasks as well. So again, revisiting this, we not really sharing any changes here in, in, in the net income, but once again, after taking into a, an effect um, that, yes, you went through your records and looked to see that we could possibly um, have an, an increase in income um, if you choose to, to put some type of a value on quality of life or other values and add that in here, you're free to. Um, that it's, your, it's your partial budget. You can do what you want. So um, the values may go up or down depending on, on how you refine it. Depending on the complexity of this, of the decisions being made, I would even still would strongly encourage you to use your team of advisors to in the partial budgeting process. As a as a team, you can think through how to prepare the budget and how to interpret the results. 
so that you hopefully will have more confidence in the decision that you make about the proposed change for your business. So these are some of the resources that were used for preparing this uh, screencast. Um, the University of Minnesota Machinery Cost Estimates, Iowa State University as well, and all of these resources are listed with the Groundwork website. We'll be having at least one more um, screencast and doing one on, on a piece of equipment next, and so I hope that you'll come back and view that one and also visit the Groundwork site for other resources as well. Thank you for listening and best of luck to you.